the good countdown timer. Yep. And we are live. Hey, everyone, if you are an e-commerce owner, marketer, somebody that owns an e-commerce shop out there, you're in the right place. This workshop, we're going to cover some crazy things to help you get more sales, increase average order values, upsells, downsells, add-ons, follow-up, shopping, marketing, all the this marketing stuff. I'm Brad Smith. This is Shanif, and we're going to cover it today for you. Um, if you can stay till the end, you know we're going to be able to give you a checklist that we're going off of today, plus an email marketing flow that is working tremendously for all the clients we're working with. So thanks for joining us. Like I said, I'm Brad, and that's Shanif. Thanks for uh, jumping on, Shanif. All right. Thank you, Brad. Appreciate the time. I know you're super busy. I know you've got clients left and right, you know, aiming to work with you. So I appreciate the time. Um, good morning, everybody out there. So we're going to get started right away. I'm just going to go ahead and quickly talk about, you know, who we are, what we're actually going to, what we're going to cover. Um, then I'll hand it over to Brad and he'll intro us to our first topic. So uh, as Brad mentioned, he is, uh, he might not have mentioned it, but he should have. He's the founder of Automation Links, one of the best marketing agencies out there. They do amazing web design. They do amazing marketing. They've got all sorts of really interesting things going on. Um, you know, they just drove several tens of thousands of dollars for a client that we worked on together. So if you need anything done, um, you know, digital marketing, website, whatever it is, you got to talk to Brad. Um, I am Shanif Dadani. I'm the founder of Aptio. We have a tool that helps e-commerce marketers personalize their marketing with AI. Basically, what we do is we predict what your customers are going to buy next, and then we help you segment them based on similarities and then target them with uh, precise campaigns. So today, you know, between Brad and myself, we have worked with hundreds of different clients, and we've kind of seen some patterns of what's working well and what's not. And we're going to go over those today. Uh, the five high-level topics that we're going to cover Basically, one, what do we like about Shopify? Now, it's not just the, the Shopify sort of product, but it's that ecosystem. What apps should you be using? Why do we like them? And what are the, what's good about Shopify? And what should you be doing if you're on the Shopify ecosystem? Then we're going to jump into a couple of marketing channels. The second topic is going to be Google Shopping uh, and Google Shopping ads and why you got to use them. They're working extremely well these days, and they're a really good workaround to some of the other ad problems that we're seeing. And you know, the third topic is gonna to be email marketing. Still one of the best ways to drive sales, still one of the uh, foundations and pillars for e-commerce marketing. Uh, fourth, we're gonna talk about paid social ads, essentially what's going on in this ecosystem, why it's starting to fall short, how you can work around that and things that we've seen work well. And then what should you do next? Like, how do you get started? At the end of this, you know, we'll post our contact information and we'll also distribute this uh, topic checklist, uh, basically our speaker's notes, to anyone who's interested. So that being said, Brad, I'm going to kick it over to you to start basically talking about um, our first topic, which is Shopify. And let's just talk about what do you think about Shopify? Why do we like it? And what, what should people be doing with it? Well, if you don't mind, I'd like to share the screen, screen real quick just to get everyone excited for what we're going to cover today. That's all right. So let me share my screen. And if you guys are in here, we'd really appreciate it if you left us a comment, ask questions along the way or just gave us some feedback. If you have an e-commerce store, let us know. Put your e-commerce link in the, in the notes or in the comments, and we'll make sure to check it out. So this is a, a marketing funnel, e-commerce funnel that we've built. Shanif and I have worked on something like this before, and it looks overwhelming. It looks scary, but we're going to actually cover each step, most of these steps today in this workshop. And as you can see, this particular customer, average order value 175, ROAS, um, monthly revenue um, and the profit. And it all breaks down into, I think, this follow-up flow after you do the marketing. So we're going to cover that today. Um, but first, let's jump into Shopify. Now, if anyone has never seen a funnel like that, that's one of my favorite things to make, by the way. <laughs> You're going to be getting a copy of that. Just make sure you let us know in the notes and we'll send it to you. Um, we'll give you that, that sales funnel, even though it looks scary and over it to you, just so you can see you know, how that your email software. So we, we always recommend people use Shopify because of all the different options they allow you to have set up um, pretty easy to get that site built on there. But I think the most important part is in the follow-up. So anyone can run Facebook ads. Anyone can set up a Google ads account. Anyone can send emails. But what is, I think, number one, to increase average order value. And Shopify has these amazing options, whether it's through the app 
um, through the pop-ups that they have to add on bundles, to add on more products, to add on upsells, um, different things like that to get that average order value up. Some other things it allows you to do is allows people to add, you know, multiple things to the cart, bundle different products, um, recommend products during checkouts. Um, I think the second most important thing is abandoned cart. It has an abandoned cart email flow already built into Shopify. Now we don't recommend you use that one. Maybe when you first start out, just use it because you just click a button and abandoned carts turned on. But, um, you know, Abandoned cart is one of the most important things to any e-commerce platform out there. And Shopify offers that with a click of a button. Shipping, the average order value we'll cover today about how to get the average order value up by free shipping, let's say over a hundred bucks. So now you're able to grow and scale your business. Um, what did I miss, Shanif? There's tons of stuff out there, but you know we don't work for them or anything like that. We just recommend it. Yeah. And the products and increase order value they offer. I like their app ecosystem. I think that um, one of the things I really like about Shopify is they plug in well to things like Oberlu. They they plug ship. So you as an e-commerce person, e-commerce owner, have so much stuff to worry about. Um, the Shopify ecosystem, I think, makes it super easy for you to get up and running uh, while minimizing all of the sort of logistics that you have to work on. Now, this is you know a webinar about marketing, and so we are going to start talking a lot more about marketing more than logistics. But I think if you're thinking about the Shopify ecosystem, they make it easy for you to run your store, and they have a lot of great apps that you can plug in. Yep. And you've got a ton of agencies who are really well known or uh, really well uh, well versed in the world of uh, Shopify. So those are some of the things I was talking, thinking about. Um, you know, Brad, we wanted to dive a little bit deeper onto some of the some of the things you just mentioned, something like abandoned carts, how you can start to use uh, a little bit more sophistication, maybe on top of what we've already talked about, especially when it comes to how do you upsell people? How do you cross sell people? How do you increase your average order value? Um, you know, we can talk about things like recommended products, bundling, happy to talk about that. Anything you want to jump in on first before we went dive, uh, dive deeper into that? Nope. I think that's good timing on that. You know, if you're using a different uh, platform out there, you know, it's pretty hard to switch. If you need to feel like you're limited by the um, website you're using now, you know, I would say start planning on maybe switching to Shopify because of all the options they have. Stay, with, stay where you are and you can always add, you know, different softwares to it like email marketing and abandoned cart to make sure that this flow actually works for you. So I, I wanted to show this today, Shanif, um, the flow that I kind of gave you a sample of before. Uh, I want to just cover a couple things here. So most people focus on the website and the marketing. And what happens is they miss out on the entire follow-up system. Now, like I said, anyone can set up ads and uh, build a website. And you don't get good results your results, the feedback I get is, why am I not getting more sales from my e-commerce store? And if you feel like that, maybe you're frustrated with that. And you're like, listen, I have this great product. I'm doing all these Facebook ads and Google marketing, but it's just not leading to more sales. Well, we're going to show you more sales from that. And just the easiest way to explain it is the average website gets a 1% conversion rate. So if you think about that, that's really low. If if not less, most people are less that I see. So yeah. less than 1% conversion rate. Now you're spending all this mark money on marketing. You're spending all this money on ads to get people to your website. And then why are you just going to let them leave <laughs> and never talk to them again? That's the problem is you're not following up with them proper properly. You're just letting them leave. Now you have to do marketing to a whole brand new audience, following up with somebody that's already been to your site. So this flow, because we get them to the site, we give them a coupon code in exchange for their email. And now what we can do is we can set up abandoned cart follow-ups. We can send coupon email follow-ups. We can recommend other products. We can send another email to have them follow us on social media. We can send them videos. We can give them another offer. We can send them back to the order page with more products. We can retarget them on Facebook, YouTube, and Google. The, the money is in the follow-up and that's where you can get yeah. a 1% conversion rate all the way up to like a seven to 15% conversion rate. If you do this right. I think, I think what you just said, Brad, we've extremely, we've seen to be extremely true on our side, which is 
Look, the first time that you reach out to someone, um, let's say they've already made a purchase from you, they probably aren't going to be coming back um, after that first purchase. You know, they're really sort of waiting. Um, sometimes maybe 20 to 30 percent of purchases will come after the first follow after the first outreach. But a lot of a lot of the money, like you said, comes in that second email, which might come six days or seven days later or an ad that they see. Um, a lot of the times they might make a purchase after the third email. And so something that we've probably learned from the SaaS perspective in terms of trying to find customers, it also works well on the e-commerce side. You got to sort of continue to nurture someone and send out the same message um, across multiple channels. And if you do it enough and it's a, a good message, it's targeted, then people will come back. You just have to follow up with them. And in order to do that effectively, you really should be using automated um, automated flows, automated ads, automations across the board. So you don't go crazy as an e-commerce owner, you know, spinning your, spinning your wheels, pulling your hair out. Um, do you think that's, that's fairly accurate to say? Oh yeah. And you really only need to set it up once to start driving some sales. Like you can set up the automated emails, the retargeting ads, you know, just set it up once. You, I, we recommend going back and continue to fix it, but just set it up at least at first um, to start from it and then you can go and just keep yep. improving it. So don't let it overwhelm you either, right? Set up an abandoned cart, set up a couple follow-up emails, just start small and then you can always build on to that. It's totally true. Um, and then as you're starting to follow up with sort of more messages, smarter messages, that's where you can get really creative and start doing things like upselling, cross-selling, starting to figure out if you can nurture the customer and nurture them so that they uh, essentially drive more sales for you. So one of my favorite ways to do this is with cross selling, like smart cross selling, where you basically figure out what did they buy in the first purchase or in the first order or the previous order, whatever it was. And then based on that, what are they likely to do next? And if you can show them something, if you can show them a product that they care about, or you can show them even something that they're interested in, whether it's a, a product or a subscription, or even just a few product images from a, a collection, they have an affinity for what you're going to start to see is that your cross sell your post purchase cross sell and upsell rates start to go up you know starting small three for three percent four percent but if you continue to do something like this in your automated flows your automated messages it really can start to increase your cross sell your incremental sales by by double digits um yep. i'm sure you brad you've probably seen this yourself what do you think about that i mean i totally agree um <laughs> and you can dive into reminding them to come back and buy you know, I think of it that, that way. You're thinking of it, which you do an amazing job with your software. Okay, these are the recommended products that they want to buy. It knows that. And then you can add bundles. You can increase the order value. I'm thinking of like relationship. How can we build a better relationship with this person where we send them emails and just say, hey, thanks for checking out our store. You know, if you ever need anything from us, let us know. And then that next email is where your software can come in and say, Hey, by the way, this is probably the, the product you were interested in. But the more you can build that relationship with them, send them quality emails, um, ask them to follow you on social media, show you yep. didn't even know you had in your store. If you have more than 10 products, maybe they were just looking for one. Let's recommend another one that we think goes well with that. So I, I think of it as relationships. How can we build better relationships? And now guess what? You have a repeat buyer another repeat buyer, they're going to come back and buy maybe at least three times. Maybe they'll refer, maybe they'll share it on social media. Maybe they'll take a selfie with your product because you built that relationship through these quality emails and through your social media accounts. So I think, you know, Shani, you're right on point with that, with the time can go a long way with the e-commerce store. We've seen email just drive so much money. And obviously we have a whole section to talk about that. Um, and then just in terms of finalizing what we like about Shopify, I think, you know, the ability to create bundles both on your store, but also in follow up emails is a really, really good way to drive increased AOV. Um, we've seen that, cost that our customers who have done this have started to increase their average order value by anywhere from 8% to 10%. It's really simple. You just figure out the products that are selling uh, together that are separate SKUs and you make them one SKU and you just make them a bundle. Super simple, you know, it takes no more than four or five minutes, but it's something that you can do um, to dramatically increase your sales. Just in case, you know, I, I know people are thinking, okay, what email software should I use? What my first email should be? What should I put in a band cart? So I just want to simplify it for you all. You know, 
possible. If you have Shopify, we recommend Clavio. And Shanif, you can um, yeah. you can say Clavio in your way too. Clavio. I'll say Clavio. I'll say Clavio. No one knows how it's said, right? I think I talked to the founder a couple of times, and he said Clavio or Clavio. I, I I don't remember, but that's that's a it's a great tool for you to be using. They do the email marketing. It integrates with Shopify or your e-commerce platforms. Really simple. Um, and then from there, you know, like I said, if you have Shopify or whatever you're using, just turn on the abandoned cart until you can go build that out in Clavio or Clavio. I think they want you to say it twice, say it wrong once and say it right <laughs> twice. That's why. <laughs> so it's great. It's great marketing. Yep. So set up an abandoned cart. Just they have a, a section where you can just say these, this is the um autofill for whatever products they had in their cart. You don't even have to think about it. Just use their abandoned cart email. They have already built for you. It'll autofill the products in there. So simplify the abandoned cart, just at least set it up. Send them a welcome email, a personal welcome email after they come to your website. You know, I always recommend giving someone a 10% discount when they for in exchange for their email. And that first email should say, hey, you know, I'm Brad. This is my store. Thanks for checking it out. Here's your coupon code. And if you'd like, you know, follow us on social media. And that's a good way to just keep staying in touch. So I think simplify it. Clavio, Clavio, email, personal one, set up a 10% discount and set up your abandoned cart. Start there. And then you can build from there. Well, I think we can talk about Shopify all day. I would love to start talking a little bit more about maybe Google Shopping, Brad. I think you've seen great results here. We've seen great results on you know our customers as well as my little tiny e-commerce store. So do you want to talk a little bit about Google Shopping and how people can be using that to driving to drive more sales? Yeah, so we, we covered the end part of the funnel, the follow-up, which we're going to get into emails after this. But you know, really, just to simplify it, you might already have a website. You might have already started um, Google or ads or Facebook ads. Now, what we know now, and now Google knows, they want to compete with Amazon. Commerce store, and you are not on Google Shopping, you're missing out on a lot of sales. We just implemented Google Shopping for an e-commerce store a couple months ago, and it's already drove them from averaging 10,000 sales a month to 30,000 sales a month. So we increased their uh, revenue thousand dollars just by setting up Google Shopping. Now, Google knows what consumers like, so they change their search to that. They know that if I'm local in your local area, I'm gonna sh they're going to show maps. Why? Because I like to use the maps. You want to see where that's located on your maps here. But they also know if you're a consumer and you're shopping for something, you want to see a product image. You want to see the price. And the most, you know, the biggest thing I like is you want to see reviews. So when you first come to the store, these are shopping ads. And you're going to see the product image, the title, the price, and the reviews. And this is what's going to dramatically increase your sales for your e-commerce store. If you don't already have this set up, Download the Google Shopping app in your Shopify store, get it connected, and start selling right away. Uh, Shanif, what sticks out to you most right here? In the Anything in particular? You know, you mentioned that the, the, the reviews are really important. The first, two, the first two products, which have reviews, and they're not, it's not just like one or 50, 400, make me think that um, products that have a lot of reviews are going to be worth my time. They're going to be worth me diving into and making a click on. The other thing that sticks out is one of them has free shipping. And so you're you're basically able to, even though it's a small amount of space, you're able to take that space and really do a few things that can draw a, a customer's eye. And so those are some of the things that stick out to me, Brad. Um, anything else that I missed that you wanted to point out? Yeah, I think number one, and a lot of people think it's price. I personally don't think it's price when it comes to Google Shopping. What I think it is the first thing I look for is reviews. So this this product wins in reviews. I would be most likely to click on this because of the five-star reviews. There's 54. It doesn't need to have a thousand. I, just, I think more than 10. Get your friends and family to leave you some reviews on it, right? But if this product right here had, that would be a winner. That would be a home run. You'd get at least a 600% ROAS on this ad. And ROAS is return yep. on ad spend. So for every dollar you get back, I think you could get $6 back in your ads with this. So if you have a really nice picture with a competitive price and five-star reviews, you're going to make a ton of sales from this ad. This one, I would say, no, it's got only four-star reviews and it has a crappy picture. 
So I would say this one with this picture is the winner. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. And, you know, the thing I would say, obviously, if you're getting started, the most important thing is just get a couple of ads up and running because you're probably, you know, drowning from performance issues on other channels, which we'll talk about later on. Um, but the really good thing about search ads is people are looking for the product at that time. And so search has something that paid social doesn't, which is the ability to capture somebody right when they're ready to buy. And so just Brad, like you said, I think things that capture people's eye in terms of really sharp images, um, you know, sometimes if you're, uh, sometimes images of people work well, you know, our psychology is geared up so that we recognize faces and images of people, but uh, just get started. You know, it doesn't matter if you don't have the reviews right now, you can get them, but uh, don't waste time, don't waste money. It's just one of those things where you should be doing it if you're not already. Now there might be people on here that um, aren't running any ads yet, or maybe don't want to run ads yet. I still recommend getting started because you will start being shopping area. So if you're not doing any ads, or even if you are, at least get this set up so you start showing up in Google search. These are free. Eventually over time, it's just like SEO, your products are gonna start growing on Google Shopping. And as you can see, these guys had an ad and they're on the free listing. So anything under this line is free. So these guys are probably making a ton of sales because they're number one of the top for SEO and they're up here in the ads. It's like a double whammy ads make sure you start getting set up in this in this um list free list but these would be the ads up here at the top now brad then, yeah, to actually like, yep, oh, sorry to actually get set up there's a there's a way you can connect your shopify feed or whatever whatever e-commerce system you're using right and send it over yep. to google and it'll be able to pick things up so it is one of those things where it's kind of set it maybe not necessarily forget it but set it up once and sort of tweak it once a week or once every month or so is that right yeah, especially in Shopify, if you just go to the app store and type uh, shopping, um, just look for the, the one that shows up at the top with the best reviews. That's usually the one we use. Perfect. Yep. Excellent. Don't do it today. If you don't have this, do it right, right away. <laughs> because um, this is like, you want to be one of the first. There's obviously thousands of people already on here, but Google's really pushing this. They want to be Amazon. So if you're not on here, get this set up today. Yeah, I would say this is one of the best ways to start driving sales right away. Over time, you'll start to optimize your ad spend and you'll start to see maybe, like Brad said, maybe you are getting 6X or 7X ROAS on most of your ads. Maybe you're not. So you can start to tweak what's working and what's not, but you won't know until you actually get up and running. Um, yeah. But just get up and running is kind of our main point here. Anything else and on, then you can, on Google Shopping? Then build, on, then build on that. And by the way, if um, yeah. anyone's on here watching, leave your uh, e-commerce or website link in the comments for us. And we'll be you know, happy to check them out and take a look. And of course, if you have any questions about Google Shopping and whatever else we cover, leave us a comment and we'll answer them uh, live here if you get them in before we're done. Yep, yep, happy, happy to answer questions. Um, feel free to throw them into the chat panel if you're on Riverside. I know we had a couple of issues with LinkedIn, so uh, hopefully you all found a different stream. YouTube and Facebook are up and running. So just leave some comments or questions and we'll be able to get to them. Um, now, that being said, I think one of the mace, one of the most important channels uh, is email marketing. Brad, would you agree that that's probably the, one of the main things to focus on? And it does kind of require a little bit of continuous effort over time, but it can drive lots and lots of sales. Um, like 30,000 in one month without ads for one client. Um, 20,000, yeah, I mean, you know. it's, it's incredible. And the best part about it is you're not paying for ads to email these people. So once they get on your list, you just send out an email, you pay per subscriber to you're using, but that's hard, nothing yeah. compared to ads. That's one of my and favorite pop, things about it. It's, <laughs> you're already paying for it and you can use it as much as, as much as you need. Sorry to cut you off, Brad. Go ahead. No. The beginning follow up with people. Now, how do you, you know, I think a lot of people question, how do I stay away from spam? How do I stay away from the promotion folder? So we're going to cover that too um, right now. And also, you know, what do I send? You know, how often do yeah. I send? Um, do I include pictures? Um, so we're going to dive into that next. And that will also be in our checklist when we email it to everyone that's jumped on. Yeah. So I think staying away from spam is one of the things that most new email users um, run into. So there's a, there's a lot of things that go into uh, your, your offer going into spam or the promotions folder. 
is this really disproportionately affects sort of people who are new, uh, new email customers or do, who don't have a lot of uh, volume. So maybe most of our listeners today aren't, uh, don't care about that. So we'll spend a quick amount of time talking about that, but there's, there's all sorts of things you can do. Um, one of the tactics I really like is, is warming up your email. So, well, actually, before I start, the most important things you can do are um, what's called sort of DKIM, um, S- there's SPF and DMARC. So those are crazy acronyms, but what they what they mean, what they relate to is basically setting up your email domain so that it's trustable. Uh, basically what they let you do is they let an email uh, recipient's um, domain make sure that it's, you know, the, the email that you say it's from, the domain that you say your email is from is actually from that domain. Uh, this helps those, those recipient domains trust your email. It helps them make sure that what they're receiving from you isn't spam. It's not spoofed email. So it does require a little bit of a little bit of technical setup, but it's one of the most important things you can do. It's DMARC, DKIM, and SPF. I think just set those up right away. You just need to set them up once, and then you're good to go. The I other thing that I really so in order to actually set them up, yeah. So simple. Yeah. Um, they I, are sort I of technical. Technical. Clavio tasks. helps you out with that basically. Yeah. Is the Clavio will help you email. out. Uh, you may or may not have to jump into your domain tool like GoDaddy or Google and set up a couple of sort of simple entries into a text form. But I believe you're right, Brad. I think I think uh, Clavio does help with that. And most of the email tools will at least help you set up two out of the three, if not all of them, um, I believe. Yeah. Make sure you, you reach out to your email marketing software. And I must have said the word Siri because she asked me if I needed help. Um <laughs> reach out to them they'll be sure to help you and if not reach out to us maybe we can help absolutely uh Sorry. the other Go thing ahead. that i yeah no the other thing i really like is um warming up your email and so what that means is incrementally increasing the number of emails you send per day so rather than just blasting out an email to your your entire list right when you get set up you might want to send out maybe five maybe 20 emails on day one and 25 on day two and slowly work your way up um, certain email providers actually do have a limit on the number of emails you can send per day. Now, if you're using tools like Clavio and if you're using, uh, you know, really well designed tools, that won't be an issue, but you still want to make sure that you're ramping up slowly because this helps, uh, it helps the email providers make sure that you're not just going to spam everything all at once and then sort of never come back. It makes sure that you're sort of building a reputation for your email domain and that reputation will be used properly and wisely. And so this is something that email providers look pretty closely at when they're looking at whether to put something into spam uh, or even the even the promotions folder. What do you think, Brad? Yeah, and I have a, can I share a secret <laughs> hack? Yeah, please. <laughs> All right. Um, first email that should go out is called the nine word email. Have you heard of that, Shani, the nine word email? You, you know, I haven't, I'm curious. I'd, I'd love to hear it. So it's nine words. No pictures, no links. It's coming back that, to them asking a question. If you can do this on the very first email, now you've started a thread with your email subscriber because Interesting. Um, if they reply back, now you're in their threads and you're gonna stay in their inbox for a long time. So basically as mine, if somebody subscribes to anything on our website, my very first email is, hey Shanif, is this the best email to send you, send you the free guide? I'm not sure if I just cut out there. And no, no, I heard you. You're good. Cool. So, I mean, if you want a checklist, you ask me for the checklist. And my first reply is, hey, is this the best email to send you the checklist? And all you have to do is reply back, yes. 80% open rates. And then the next email is at a 60% open rate. And this is somebody that has never emailed you before. So quick hack. First email you send to a new subscriber, nine word email asking them a question, and then you'll stay in their inbox. Man, that's brilliant, Brad. I really like that because, you know, whenever you're doing email marketing, you're always worried about open rates and click through rates. And so that's a really, really smart way to get somebody to to interact with you. I think the main thing here is off is the offer, right? You know, make sure that you're providing them something of value so that you so that they'll respond back to you and not just archive you or delete your email. Exactly. Pretty. So you've got you've got spam. Oh, go ahead. Uh, last thing on that on your first couple emails, as long as they're opening them, at least the first one, uh, try not to put any pictures in there. 
three links. And so um, Google, Yahoo, and Outlook, they're not looking at the front of your email that you're sending them. They're actually looking at the coding behind your email. And you're probably not familiar with HTML coding. If you are, that's awesome. You'll understand. But really behind your email, Hello. scrambled code. And if you put pictures on, onto that code. So when Google, Yahoo, and Outlook see a ton of code coming in, it looks like spam to them. But if you just have a plain text with no code, at least for the first email, they're going to say that like personal email, personal email, not newsletter email, yeah. you'll hit the inbox. You know, I've also heard reports that even a single link in your email might affect your spam score. And so you really want to make sure that you're optimizing the first, especially if you're a new email user um, or you get a new email domain, rather. You really want to make sure that the first 100, 200 emails you send out are, are really clean and simple and sort of uh, compelling and engaging. So really important tips there. Um, more, yeah, more along the content side of things, I think that's what these email providers are really looking at. When you get somebody to, the most important thing is getting somebody to open an email. And one thing I wanted to mention here is the best, one of the best ways to do that is to tailor your messaging to that person. Um, emails that contain, I think somebody's first name have a, a you know, small but noticeable higher open rate, like 3% or 4% higher than emails that don't have somebody's uh, first name in their subject line. You also have preview text where you can start to uh, provide relevant information. And then, you know, from my perspective, I'm a little bit biased. The more the more personalized messaging you have in, inside the email in terms of the offers, the products, the things that people really care about, the more likely they are to click. And if you get somebody to click on an email, it's a really good sign to the to the spam engine that, you know, maybe this isn't spam. So personalization of messaging, uh, it's one of those things you should do once you've set up the foundations, but you should strive to do it once you're up and running with email. Now, what about... Um... Like, let's say somebody comes to your site, they get a coupon code or purchase something. Um, how do, do, should you follow up with them and how often? This is a question I get all the time. Um, and then what's in those emails? Just a quick overview. You know, Brad, I, I would love to hear your thoughts. I'll tell you what I've set up for my clients and maybe we can hear yours afterwards because I think you've got a lot of experience here. What we do is we do a three email sequence where it's, you know, the first email so we'll talk, let's talk about the coupon code welcome series specifically. The welcome series um, is important because this is the flow or the email campaign where you're gonna drive the most revenue. Uh, in general, what you're doing is you're saying, hey, thanks for coming to my website. Thanks for checking us out. Here's the coupon that we promised you, you know, 10%, 20%, whatever it is. Here's your coupon code. You, have, you can use it on your first uh, purchase and it'll apply. Bonus points for putting a time limit or a sense of urgency on it because that makes yeah. people really want to spend um, very quickly. What we like to see is if somebody doesn't do anything, if they don't make a purchase after that first email, we wait a certain amount of time. Because this is a welcome series, we might wait less time, maybe, a, I don't know, a couple of days as opposed to a week. It's kind of different for every like provider. One day. Yep. one day. One day works well. And you follow back up, like we said at the beginning, the follow the money's in the follow up. So follow back up, give them a, you know, give them that discount code again. But in the follow up, maybe you do something different. Like you say, hey, look, here's the story of our brand. Here's how we got started. Or, hey, look, here are some of our products that you might have some of our best sellers. Um, you know, don't be afraid to get personal. Don't be afraid to tell your story and develop a relationship with the customer. And then we do send out a third email if there's still no activity after that. And then um, the third email is kind of a, what I tend to do with our clients and what I tend to recommend is something that's, hey, direct straight to the point. Hey, we want you to make your first purchase. Use this coupon code. You know, it's good until X, Y, and Z date. Um, and then if they don't sort of make a purchase after that, they get thrown into a couple of other campaigns, maybe at-risk customers or people who have never made a purchase, you know, those sort of things. But the Winbacks, uh, the welcome series rather is a couple of days long, maybe three, four, five days, three or, you know, two to three, sometimes four emails. Um, and the real, the offer is, is the coupon code. Uh, all right. So I've talked enough, Brad, what do you think about this, this strategy and how do you guys do it for your customers? I like that. The first one could be, um, you know, Hey, Shanif, is this the best email to send you the coupon code? Nine word email nice. around nine words, nice. get them to respond, send them the coupon code email the next day, um, about the founder, about the business. And I said at the beginning builds a better relationship. Now they feel like they're closer to you. 
I would recommend other products similar to what they checked out the day before and follow us on your most interactive social media channel. You not only want to follow people on email, but you want to follow up with them on your social media accounts. They see your posts on Facebook or Instagram every day. That's still a reminder about your business. So I like the email the next day to ask them to follow you on social. So now they're going to, they're going to see your social media feed. And then I love telling them about other products on that. Maybe they only saw yeah. one product. If they came from Google shopping, they were just looking for the one product. Let's give them a bundle with that product. Let's give them other pair of everything you offer. So I think we're on the same page there. The welcome series is just so important. You know, we've seen it drive anywhere from 20 to 40% of our email attributable revenue for different customers. So makes it yep. makes a big difference. Um, and what we, the welcome series and sort of the coupon, these are sort of the standard strategies. Most of you guys who are out there probably already know about this. We will talk about advanced strategies next, but really quickly wanted to mention this. We talked about it earlier, the abandoned cart strategy. There are things you should be doing. It should be part of your standard flow uh, or standard you know, toolkit when it comes to email marketing. If, uh, if you're using a tool like Klaviyo, they make it pretty easy. I think maybe there's a couple of other tools that also make it easy for you to figure out what people are uh, adding to their carts and then not completing a purchase. Um, in general, this maybe the sooner the better with these abandoned carts. Like Brad, I would generally recommend sending them out after 60 minutes, maybe two hours of somebody not making a purchase. You could even do a follow-up with them, maybe one follow-up, uh, and you can say, hey, look, supplies are limited and this is a time-limited offer. Um, what do you think about those sort of strategies for abandoned cart, Brad? Yeah, um, you and I work e-commerce business together recently that um, we have three emails for abandoned cart. And I think in the last two weeks, they've sold $700 recovered in abandoned cart, which, you know, yeah. does may, I don't know, depending on your business, it may sound like a lot. It may not sound like a lot, but it's a great start to, you know, 2,700 bucks from people that yeah. just didn't check out. That's just added on, right? So email within an hour. Next day I love, and maybe another email in three days. So I still ask for abandoned cart also. Perfect. I would think that, you know, maybe one additional, um, one additional flow that you might consider part of your, your standard set of emails that maybe is a little bit less performant, um, but it is something that you can look at. So somebody's looking at a product and let's say you've already got their email address. Um, you might want to email them to say, Hey, come back. Usually you're going to want to offer a discount in order for the purchase to be completed. Not always, but it is something that you should be doing. Um, and then any other sort of standard flows or campaigns that we haven't gone over yet, Brad, before we jump into the advanced section. Yeah. I like the coupon code. Number one, um, the follow-up you just mentioned, number three, the win back. And I think a, a really good flow purchase. Um, so number four, I think, and if you just nice. focus on at least setting up three emails for each of these four, right? And then you can build emails onto that. But after someone purchases, you want to thank them. You want to get them to follow you on social. You want to get them to recommend you to a friend. You want to get them to share it on social. You want to start a review on the product. Because if somebody purchases, gets an email as soon as they get the product, leaves you a five-star review, now that review is automatically showing on Google Shopping like we talked about, right? Yeah, Close together. If you can get the system in place, start small, three emails in each of these sequences. Now everything's just going to start building off each other. Your emails are going to help you with your Google Shopping is going to help you get more subscribers. Just all going to be just a really nice system for you, even if you start basic. So I think that would be the last one. Yeah. There's some good apps on Shopify that help you get reviews. I think Luke's is one that I've had uh, experience with. There might be a couple others. And so you can automate a lot of this as well. Um, you generally want to wait until they've gotten their product. They've been able to use it. Sometimes you can do it. Sometimes you can't. But uh, automating a lot of this um, is definitely the way to go. Um, um, now, let's say you're... could be overwhelming. Sorry. One thing that could be overwhelming is, uh, you know, how do I know which products to recommend? Or how do I know which bundles or things to put in these emails? And I was doing it manually for a long time, which was pretty hard. You're like, I have no idea. Um, Shanif software at Tio, that's actually how we met was he's like, hey, guess what? Our software automatically puts the best sellers and the best products that your customer in the email for you. And I'm like, phew, that saves me hours, all the data I've ever wanted. So I just click a button with Klaviyo, 
uh, product pictures go in there even. I was surprised when yeah. I put the pic it put the pictures automatically in there. Like this is too easy. So thanks for yeah, doing we, that. Yeah, we I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate that, that plug there, Brad. No, we're we're trying to make it easy. My background, I don't know if I mentioned it, my background is in AI and data science. And so we're trying to use some of the same techniques that I've used in my career to help folks make better performing campaigns. So you know, we got a lot more tools coming up um, and we do a lot of work with email. So, you know, one of the reasons we built out that tool is because we have been sort of guiding a lot of our, our customers on more advanced email strategies. Um, and so we can talk, love to talk about that. We've got maybe 20 minutes left, so I'll cover that in maybe five or six minutes. We have sort of strategies that yeah, rely on segmentation and personalization. So let's say you've got your standard flows set up. You've got the three email sequence or, or four email sequence running. You're still going to need to reach out to your customers. So even if you haven't, uh, you know, touched base with them um, after the flows, you're going to want to set up campaigns or flows to really continually uh, reach out to them. So there's a few ways you could do this, and it's, it all comes down to segmentation and, and personalization here. You yep. are you probably don't want to send out like a, an email blast with a discount code to all of your customers just to try to get some more sales. You're going to want to do things like figure out who your customers are that are at risk of never coming back and send them maybe a higher discount, but not send your uh, big spenders any discount. So that's one thing that that's a strategy that you're going to hear me talk about a lot if you're following me, which is figure out who your customers are and what they're going to respond to and make sure you're not you know leaving money on the table. So in addition to the win back flows. Yeah, exactly. So I think you're even A-B testing that flow that you just sent out. You know, in addition to the win back flows, you've got flows that are geared only towards your big spenders. What works really well here is trying to get them to spend a certain minimum amount so that they can get something like a free, you know, free shipping or maybe a one dollar product. Basically, with your big spenders, these people are loyal to your brand. You're going to want them to spend more, but you're going to want to offer them something as well. Um, and then you're probably one one strategy that I've seen work really well is like a weekly or a bi weekly campaign where you're just sending out either a particular collection or a product that uh, you want to hype up. And if you're using tools like Klaviyo or our Aptio plugin for Klaviyo, you're going to be able to send products and collections that are personalized for each customer. These biweekly or weekly emails can drive a very predictable amount of revenue, and they don't lead to a lot of unsubscribes. And so these are, these are the things that are going to help you start to understand. These are the things that are going to help you start to develop a systematic email strategy um, the flows in conjunction with the segments and the personalization and you can set these up automatically for the most part you know the campaigns you might need to run once every couple of weeks yourself but it should be just clicking a button uh, but these advanced strategies are things that i think can drive an additional five to ten percent sometimes twenty percent uh, or more in sales and um, you know it's they don't take a ton of time to do and if you are struggling with them, you've got great folks like Automation Links, like Brad, who can help set them up for you. They've got a great designer, uh, and they're really doing things to drive a lot of sales. So, yeah, some advanced strategies there. What do you think, Brad? Yeah, and as you were talking about that, I'm this, right? If you can see my screen, yeah. like these emails will automatically fill in the recommended products um, if anyone was at risk or just not interested. Uh, same thing for abandoned cart. And like we were talking about, we have three set up here. You know, pretty simple yep. to get these people to come back, whether it's big spenders, whether it's people at risk, whether it's people that already purchased, um, you know, all, if you can segment all these with a good software, um, this is very helpful to plug in and just increase sales by having all those different flows and segments in there. Yeah. And again, automate it all as much as possible because it does get sort of tedious. But if you can automate it all, you'll be in good shape. And then you just have to maybe send out an email campaign once every couple of weeks. I noticed some really good brands do that. Allbirds. Allbirds sends out a product recommendation every couple of weeks, even though, you know, you only buy shoes like once every couple of years. You know, they've gotten me to buy a couple of times. And so um, it's a really good strategy. Um, so, you know, Brett, I think we've covered email, not maybe not extensively because there's a whole bunch of stuff you could do here. Is there anything else you think we should talk about with email before we move on to sort of the, you know, the 800 pound gorilla in the room, which is paid social ads. Anything else you wanted to cover on email? I think we covered a lot. Um, you know, <laughs> what are the basic flows? The, the coupon code flow, abandoned cart, um, after purchase, and you mentioned one more. Um, the browse abandonment, you could throw that in there. Um, yep. add, just at least add one to three emails. Flows. Um, Use a software to help you. Uh, we recommend Klaviyo. If you're a service-based business watching, I recommend 
So either one doesn't matter. Um, and get those started, you know, at least get started with that. And you can always add on in the future. And of course, to us, if you have any questions with email, that first email should be the nine word email, ask a question, and that will increase open rates. But yeah, now our system's in place, our system's coming together. Don't run ads until your system's in place, which I recommend. So our emails are set up, our abandoned cart set up, our upsells on our Shopify are set up. Uh, one thing we didn't mention was um, free shipping, which we usually recommend offering free shipping on orders over $100. Um, what that will do is your value up. Now you're going to lose a little bit on shipping, but I usually recommend don't start ads until your average order value is over that $100 or else you're just going to kind of be spinning your wheels. So don't start ads. Your average order value is up um, and you can do free shipping on that to really increase that right away. And ready for speaking ads. of which, yep. <laughs> speaking of which, you want to start us off on this one here? It's been an interesting ride for the past, you know, 18 months for ads, Brad. I mean, frustrated. You're probably annoyed. You're probably sick of it. This is what I hear on a daily basis. My ad accounts, I've been running ads and I'm not getting any sales. I'm breaking even. Hey, if you're breaking even, you're doing better than most, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't even know who's buying. You know, that's one thing. Last April, Facebook put in place that you can't really track sales unless you're an expert. So, you know, you need to make sure your tracking is in place. Um, you have landing pages to track even better. Um, ads are a hard thing and they're even harder if that system isn't in place. But like I said, if you run ads and send them to your website, you're going to get a 1% conversion rate. Let's just sit on that yeah. for a minute. <laughs> Let's keep running ads and getting 1% conversion rate. Don't do it run ads, your system will help you get seven to 15% conversion rates. Now you will start making some money from ads. Maybe not the first month, you got to get them in that email flow. To, and then you're going to increase the conversion rates, which will allow you to keep running ads the proper way. I've got a cool picture here, Shanif, if I can share it. Go ahead. All right. So here is a ad account that is set up properly. And you can see that we track the page views, the content, the ad checkout, the purchases, ad payment info, search lead. If you don't have your pixel set up properly, you're missing out on a lot. We need to fit, get this pixel set up properly so we can go run ads to anyone that added to cart. Now we know that 6,100 people have added to cart for ads to them. Um, once this is set up, you can also track purchases. So you know that you've gotten 618 purchases. Now in 30 days, let's run an ad just to them to follow up to get them to come. So this is that system I've been talking about, we've been talking about. If your system's not in place, you're not gonna have all this tracking info to run ads to the right people. You're just gonna be running ads to people that don't care about your product. If you're selling water and you don't know who drinks water, you can't run ads to the right people. Water's a horrible analogy. <laughs> I think everyone drinks water. Let's do coffee. We showed coffee over here. If you are running ads to just a cold audience, half of those people don't drink coffee. They drink tea, a ton of money. But if you can set up your pixels and your tracking properly with your ad accounts, you'll be able to send the right ads to the right people at the right time with your emails. <laughs> so hopefully that was a quick overview there. But same thing with the system, Shanif. That's we. I think. Yeah, you know, I think ads are going to have to work in conjunction with all of your other channels. Um, you know, it used to be the case where you could just run on Facebook and you'd get everything you needed for the quarter or for the month and you'd be good to go. It doesn't work like that anymore after the iOS privacy updates. That doesn't mean that ads are dead. I actually tell my customers ads are not dead. You just have to be really precise and sort of pinpointed on how you use them. So just like you pointed out, you know, retargeting, I don't know if we actually said the word, but retargeting is a really good strategy. Figure out who's been to your store and target them with new ads. There are other strategies you could use that are uh, delivering our customers high results. You know, you mentioned if you're underwater, if you're not running profitable ads, you're actually in the majority. But what can you start to do to run profitable ads for new customer acquisition? Well, one of the strategies that we've seen work really well is you take your group of your best customers, your biggest spenders, your most loyal customers, group them together, send them over to Facebook, create a lookalike audience from them, and then run ads to the lookalike audience. For 
pretty much every customer that we've tried this on, the return on ad spend has been above one. So it's been a profitable, you know, from a perspective of just the ad spend, it's been a profitable endeavor. Um, this works because, you know, Facebook may not have the same data it used to, but by giving them a, a, a targeted group of customers who are your biggest spenders, you're doing a lot of the data work for Facebook. You're giving them a group of people who you want to say, look, these are people who I want to find more of. Find me more of them uh, using what data you still have. You should also be doing things like running win back campaigns to the group of customers who are at risk. This can be a lower budget ad spend because you, these are people who are at risk. Most of them will not come back. But if you do get some of them to come back, it's going to result in a higher customer lifetime value. So spend a smaller budget to win back people. And the thing that works really well, if you can do it, is cross-sell products that people are likely to buy. You can actually show the one. exact product. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is one that we've been sort of specializing in for the past you know, six to 10 months because we have the, these cross-sell segments where people we've kind of identified people who are likely to buy certain products based on what they've uh, done in the past. You can send this group of people over to Facebook and show them the exact product. And what's even more interesting is you can create lookalike audiences based on those groups of people so that you can find new customers who are likely to buy that specific product and you can get really granular and targeted. And so what you're hearing Brad say is retargeting to the people who act actually highly likely to buy from you. And what you're hearing me say is retargeting with, you know, or not necessarily retargeting, but targeting people precisely with the offer and the product that are going to resonate the most with them. I think the days of broad-based interest groups are probably dead, Brad. I don't know, maybe that's a bold statement. Um, you, you do have oh, to put yeah. more work into this now, but if you're putting more work in, you're probably in the top 25% of e-commerce stores, and you're gonna be able to make a lot of money from the additional work that you're doing. What do you think? I mean, I mean, depending on where you're at with at with your ads, return is the retargeting. Get that set up, making some money back, retarget the warm people that have already heard of your brand. Once you've got that dialed in and you're getting a really good return and you know what ads are working, what ads aren't, then you can let Facebook and Instagram and YouTube decide. But wait till you've, and that's another thing, when you retarget making money, you can see what ads work and what ads don't work. So when you go to run ads to a cold audience, you know which ones work already because you've already tested it with the warm audience. So do that first, make money back first. More into ads is, you know, my opinion. And Shanib, I know you're on the same page when I said something about, um, I'd like to send an email tomorrow. And in that email, I want to use the same picture on my Facebook ad tomorrow. You're like, oh, we can yeah. do that. I'm like, that's brilliant. So think about if your customers see a recommended email and then a couple hours later, they're scrolling through Instagram and they see this, they're going to buy it. It's them. so important. I mean, yeah. yeah. It's so important. You want to have the right, you want to have this, the same consistent messaging to a, a particular individual customer across all your channels. And that just helps people. You know, I think you've heard the stat you had to see is something seven, you have to see an ad seven times before you yeah. sort of make, take action on it. Um, this is something I noticed my time at, you know, working at Tap Commerce, at Twitter, now at Aptio. Like if you show somebody the same thing, they care about that, or they even have a semblance of an interest in that thing, you show it to them across different channels, they're more likely to pay attention. And so your email campaigns should match, your ad campaigns should match, your, who you're targeting for Google search should match what you're doing on Instagram, should match what you're doing on TikTok. And it's all sort of, you know, you're, we, we tend to think about groups of people, segments of people, but people are individuals and they need to be able to be shown the same message. Uh, fortunately, different people can be grouped in groups of segments that are interested in the same thing. So it makes your life easier. Um, but yeah, just be consistent, be consistent across different channels. I'd say. Um, I'm a golfer. I like golfing. And so if, if I saw this coupon code for this really cool looking golf ball that went farther, and then the next day I got an email with, that coupon code and the golf ball. And then I saw on Instagram, the same golf ball. Fine. I'll buy it. <laughs> it works. That's it that's it really it works. Yeah. It really works. Everybody thinks that they're not affected by ads and every single person on this planet is affected by ads. So you just got to show somebody the same thing consistently and they'll make a purchase. Exactly. That's just covered the most profitable and fastest way to make ads work for a business. Only yeah. if your yeah. emails are set up first, though. Your emails need to be in place first before you start doing this to get the best. 
So Brad, I think you know we've, we're at the 55 minute mark. Uh, we got five minutes left. Um, I'll go ahead and sort of put up a screen that people can use to contact us. I'll share my screen. Do you want to tell people, you know, what should they be doing next? How do they, you know, how should they get started if they haven't already? Well, I personally think they should do um, a free demo and um, free sign up on Aptio website um, because as soon as you sign up, you just wait a couple minutes to show you all your analytics and all the recommended products from your store. So once you get that connected to your store, it was like a light bulb went off when I, I connected one of my clients to your to your store, Shanif, his store to Aptio. Yeah. As soon as I saw all the data come in, I'm like, holy crap, we're like missing out on, we should be running these ads. We should be sending these emails, these photos. We should be targeting these people. So free trial on aptio.co. See these answers and be like, it'll just open your eyes and you'll be like, what the heck? I'm missing out on a lot. So at least do that, see the data and then go from there. And then if you need help getting it all set up, you know, Shanif and I kind of work hand in hand with your account. Yep. So I can set up the Google shopping and the Facebook ads for you, at least conversions tracking set up. If your Facebook ad account isn't tracking the ad to carts and the purchases, just reach out to me. That's the best way for us to get started. Just have us do something basic for you. Um, to set up and make sure everything's working properly. Google Shopping and your Facebook Pixel. Look at that TO. And that's just like the cheapest, quickest way for you to get started and start seeing results. And then Shanif and I will work hand in hand. If you love us and we, you think it's awesome, you can hire us to run it full time and to have everything on Aptio. If not, at least we brought you a. That's all I really care about. No, I love it. I love it, Brad. Um, you know, obviously we're trying to we're trying to drum up some business, but these are actual tactics and strategies that not only we've implemented for our customers, but we've seen sort of other folks that we don't work with implement and they work really well. Um, like I said, Brad's team is great at getting everything up and running. He's got a great agency. Uh, our tool is really heavy on data analytics, recommendations, predictions. So if nothing else, you know, hopefully you can take some of these tactics and strategies and at the minimum, start to you know get your ad spend back above one row as and start to implement some email tactics that you haven't had before. Uh, Brad's website has some resources. Our website has some resources on how you can do this getting started, uh, even if you don't work with us. But we hope you do. Um, we'll give everybody, you know, I'll give you guys a discount if you uh, mention this webinar. And outside of that, we're always happy about this stuff because it is really interesting. Uh, we're going to try to do a couple more workshops and webinars going forward. So keep an eye out, follow our uh, social media, join our subscription newsletters and things like that. So you can stay in touch with sort of the best practices that are out there. Hey, I do have a um, e that gives 10% off like a mock-up. I'll, okay. I'll include that for everyone that watched this when we send it out. And that way you can we'll, see we'll a really high converting landing page too. It's awesome. And Brad, what we'll do is we will post on, at least on the Aptio and my personal social media, some resources that people can use. Um, we'll post the topics and the agenda that we covered today. Uh, we'll post a recording of this, uh, of this workshop. If you can send over your um, uh, the landing page, we'll get that in there and we'll sort of put together a package. We'll post that on our social media. You can get it on yours as well. So people can come in and look at that stuff after the, after the workshop is done. That's awesome. I think that's a, that will really help people out. You know, get that system in place, guys. If you're not awesome, listen out. <laughs> uh, well, thank you everyone for joining us this morning. We're hoping to do more of these. If you liked it, let us know. If you hated it, let us know how we. Hopefully, this was helpful, and we hope you guys all make a ton of money from your marketing going forward. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye.